floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to my presentation on multi-designated receiver signed public encryption. This is joint work with William Moore and Christopher Portman. Oh, thanks, sorry. Okay. So uh, in this paper, we introduced two new types of public encryption schemes. The first one is as in the title, and the second one is called PKBC or public encryption for broadcast. We also give constructions of both of these schemes from standard assumptions, and I would like to note that any MDRS PKE scheme, which satisfies anonymity, yields a multi-designated verifier signature scheme, or MDVS, with privacy of identities. This means that we give the first um, MDVS scheme with privacy of identities from standard assumptions. Okay. So now let's look at the syntax for uh, PKBC schemes. So suppose you have a sender Alice and five receivers, B1 through B5, with uh, these public keys. So RPK just means receiver public key and the same, similar for RSK. So if Alice wants to send a message to say, for example, a vector of receivers, B1, B4, and B3, she just encrypts it using this vector of public keys and the message. And then to the crypt, for example, B1 will just use his own secret key and he will get back not only the message, but also the vector of public keys with respect to which the ciphertext was encrypted. I wanted to point out here that uh, the decryption algorithm really only needs the secret key of the receiver. So this is important because, for example, if the, the encryption scheme achieves some sort of anonymity, if the encryption would need the public keys of the other parties, then the receiver would have to guess who the other parties are or who would have to know that in advance. And then the, receive, the, the vector of receiver's public keys is also output so that the party knows who the other receivers were. Okay, so we consider these three notions as the basic security notions for PKEBC schemes. And as an addition, we will also consider anonymity or IKCC to security. So consistency is uh, captures the following. So even if Alice would now be dishonest, she cannot come up or any ciphertext she might come up with will satisfy that if, for example, one of the honest receivers decrypts it and obtains some message and some vector of public keys, for example, B1, B3, B5, then any other honest receiver whose public is in this vector, when it decrypts the same ciphertext, will obtain exactly the same vector and exactly the same message. Then there is also robustness. So robustness is uh, consider, considers uh, an honest sender and uh, honest receivers. And this is similar to the robustness notion for uh, normal PKE schemes. Uh, the only difference is that it's adapted for PKBC schemes. So basically, if Alice sends a message to, say, B1 and B4, of course, B1 would still decrypt it normally. But if for some reason, B3 gets also this ciphertext, when he tries to decrypt it, he will not get anything. Then we also have confidentiality. So if Alice sends a message to two honest receivers, a party who is not one of these receivers and who is dishonest will not learn anything about the underlying message other than the size of the message. So in this case, B5 would not learn anything other than the length of the message. Similarly, sort of similarly, for anonymity, uh, B5 will not learn who the receivers of the message are, although it will still learn that the, that the ciphertext is intended to two, uh, to two receivers. So for example, it would not be able to tell if the receivers of the ciphertext were B1, or, uh, B1 and B4, or maybe uh, they were B2, B4, or any other possible combination of honest receivers. Okay, so with this, let's just have a look at how one can, how one can construct PKBC schemes, uh, PKBC scheme. 
So we'll first recall our Young's NCC1 PKE scheme, and then we'll show how to make it, uh, how to turn it into a PKBC scheme. And finally, we'll make it actually anonymous. So as building blocks for our Young's PKE scheme, we'll have an NCPA secure PKE scheme and also a non-interactive zero knowledge proof. The key pair generation algorithm will generate two key pairs for the underlying CPA scheme and also a CRS for the NISC. The public key will consist of the public keys for this underlying CPA scheme and also the CRS for the NISC. And the secret key will just be the secret key of one of these CPA uh, generated secret keys. Uh, I mean, one of the secret keys that were generated by this uh, CPA scheme and uh, also the public key, sorry. So for encryption, what the sender does is it just generates two ciphertexts. Each of them are in encryption under one of the public keys of the receiver of the message. And then uses this NISC scheme to prove that there is a message that both of these ciphertexts are encryptions of the same message. Of course, then the ciphertext for this PKE scheme will correspond to the NISC proof and the two uh, to the two cipher tests that were generated. For decryption, a receiver will first check if the NISC proof is valid for the same statement. And if it is, it will decrypt the first cipher text and simply output the, the underlying message. One thing I would like to note is that if the NISC scheme is assumed to be simulation sound, then the PKE scheme will actually be in CC2 secure. So now let's see how can we generalize this into a PKEBC scheme. So first, PKEBC schemes have an additional algorithm that is used to generate now the CRS for this NISC. And then in key generation, we no longer have to generate this CRS for the NISC. So the public key will just consist of the public keys of the underlying CPA secure scheme. Now recall that the encryption algorithm will now get as input this vector of receiver public keys. And so what the sender does or what this encryption algorithm does is that now the sender has to compute for each of these senders an encryption of the message that it wants to send. So it's basically the same as before, but just that it does it for each of the senders. Then it, is, uh, it uses this uh, NISC scheme to prove that there is a message attached such that every ciphertext that it generated is a, an encryption of this message M under the corresponding public key that was received as input to the scheme. Okay, and then the ciphertext will correspond to this NISC proof, to the vector of ciphertext that were generated, and also to the vector of public keys. Decryption will be similar, except that now we also have to check which ciphertext the receiver should decrypt. So what the receiver does is that it's just, it looks for uh, the index such that his uh, public key matches the one that is in this vector in the ciphertext. And of course, if it, there is no such uh, index, it just does not output anything. But if it finds it, then it just tries to decrypt the ciphertext and outputs the vector of public keys that were in the ciphertext together with the message that it obtained from decrypting the ciphertext. Okay, um, one thing I wanted to notice from, the, from this scheme is that notice that, of course, this is not, uh, does not achieve any sort of anonymity first because this vector V goes in plain in the, in the ciphertext. And also because actually even the NISC statement has this vector there. I mean, the, the vector of public keys is not part of the witness, so it does not have to be hidden. Okay, so let's have a look at how things look. We know that there are NISC schemes from standard assumptions, and actually there are also simulation sound NISCs from standard assumptions. So we take any simulation sound NISC, and from, also from any PKE scheme from, uh, which is in the CPA secure, we get this first construction of a PKEBC scheme. However, it's still not anonymous. So let's make the previous scheme actually anonymous. 
So the main idea will be to add a binding commitment to the vector of receiver's public keys and also to the message. And then, when uh, instead of just encrypting the message, we'll encrypt the vector of public keys, the message, and also the random coins that were used to compute the commitment. So now the building blocks are the same as before, but also now a statistically binding commitment scheme. And actually, we also need the underlying PKE scheme to also be IKCPA secure. So the public parameter generation uh, algorithm or setup algorithm. Now, the only difference is that it also has to compute this CRS for the commitment scheme, but everything else looks uh, the same as before. Now, the, uh, our scheme, what it does is, it first one has to compute the commitment to the vector of uh, public keys, to which we are encrypting the message, okay, and uh, also of the message under some sequence of random coins row. And then for each receiver, we'll have to generate, uh, essentially, instead of just being encryption of a message, we encrypt not only the message, but also the sequence of random coins and this vector V. And then the NISC statement is slightly different because we have to show that there is a message, but now also there is a vector of public keys and the sequence, and these are now in the witness such that essentially they explain the commitment and also each of the encryptions. Okay. Uh, and now, of course, the commitment is also part of the final ciphertext. For decrypting, the, the decryption is basically the same as before, but now we have to go over each of the ciphertexts and check which one was meant uh, for, the part, for, for this receiver. So we will try to decrypt each ciphertext until we finally find one that first decrypts correctly, and second, such that the public key of the receiver who is decrypting matches in the same index as, the, as in this vector, and such that it can, you can recompute the commitment. This gives you like correctness, basically. Okay, and if there is none, of course, you just don't, out, don't output anything, and otherwise you will output this vector V and the message. Okay, so let's see how things look now. Now we also have this additional statistically binding commitment scheme, which is from standard assumptions. And we'll also use a PKE scheme, which is not only in CPA, but also IKCPA secure. And this also exists from standard assumptions. And with these three building blocks, we get, we get the first scheme, which um, satisfies uh, all the security notions of PKVC schemes, plus this IKC, IKCC2 security. Okay, so with this, let's just now look at the syntax and security notions for MDRS PKE schemes. So first, the syntax. The syntax is somewhat similar to before uh, to the PKVC schemes, things that now senders also have uh, key pairs. Then a sender to, to send a message also has to use his own uh, or her own uh, secret key in order to generate his ciphertext. And decryption now will output not only this vector of receiver public keys and the message, but also the sender's public key. So again, uh, I wanted to make the same note as before, which is for the crypting, you really only need to know the sender's public key and you don't need to know who the, uh, sorry, the receiver's secret key, not the sender's public key. And you do not need to know uh, who the sender is or who the other receivers are. And this is actually output by uh, the decryption. So the security notions that MDRS PKE schemes should satisfy are these uh, four properties plus anonymity. Okay, so I'll just go over the, the security notions. So off the record, it guarantees the following. So suppose that A2 just sends some message M to this vector of receiver. So B4, B5, B2. B2, uh, B5, because he's dishonest, might want to try and uh, tell A3 that, um, you know, A2 said, said something. So it just wants to convince A3 now that, uh, who is not a designated receiver, that A2 say, said something. And off the record guarantee captures that, well, maybe actually A2 never said anything. Maybe B5 is actually just making it all up. So then what happens is that of course, if A3 cannot knows that he cannot distinguish the ciphertexts 
that would be honestly generated by A2 or the ciphertexts that would be generated by B5, it will not be convinced. Okay, so then we also have authenticity. This is essentially the same uh, as for MDVS schemes. And it just says that the dishonest parties cannot come up with ciphertexts that an honest receiver will successfully decrypt, where the public key that is output by the decryption is the public key of some honest sender, and this honest sender had never sent a ciphertext, which is basically the encryption of the same message to uh, some factor of parties. Okay, so there is also consistency. It's similar to before. The only thing is that now we also have to consider the sender. So if B1 outputs some vector of uh, actually a triple, where in this vector there is, for example, B4's uh, public key with some sender's public key as PKX, then when B4 decrypts, she should obtain exactly the same because B4's public key was output also by B1's uh, decryption. Then we also have confidentiality, and this really looks like before. So it's just that dishonest parties will not learn anything about the underlying message other than the length of the message. And finally, we also have anonymity. And for anonymity, the guarantee is slightly different, although similarly to before, again. So the thing is that now the dishonest parties will not only not learn who the receivers are, but also not learn who the sender was. So in this case, the dishonest receivers would not learn that maybe the sender was A2 and the receivers were B1 and B4. It could be any possible combination of an honest sender and two honest receivers. Okay, so finally, let's just have a very brief look at how one could, or the main idea for constructing an MDRS PKE scheme. And basically, the, the main idea is really just to use an MDVS scheme with, does not have to be anonymous or does not have to satisfy privacy of identities and an IKCC to secure PKEBC scheme. And basically, we'll use the MDVS scheme to sign messages with respect to some factor of or to some set of receivers. And then we'll use the PKEBC scheme to encrypt all the keying information uh, plus the message and the signature. And yeah, and basically, this is main idea, the main idea of the construction. So finally, let's have a look at how things look. So we had this from before, and now if we take any MDVS scheme and also any anonymous PKEBC scheme, using this construction, we will just get the MDRS PKE scheme, which satisfies all the basic MDRS PKE scheme notions plus anonymity. And finally, again, uh, as I said, I think in the first slide, uh, before, there were no constructions of these MDVS schemes uh, with anonymity from standard assumptions. Uh, there was one construction based on verifiable functional encryption. And essentially, since any MDRS PKE scheme is essentially an MDVS scheme, but just gives even more guarantees, um, basically, we actually give the first MDVS scheme with uh, anonymity. Okay, so thank you for your attention and please let me know if you have any questions. Is there any question? No question here? Yes, there is a, can you please use the microphone? Hello. Ah, great. Um, sorry, I just wanted to ask, um, what are the real world uh, situations where um, specifically, I think in the, in, in the first scheme that you described, uh, the receivers do know who are the other receivers when they are decrypting. And I was wondering what would be the situations where they would, like receivers would need to know who are the other receivers of a message. 
So the question is the uh, use case for the first scheme. So when receivers would not know, okay. So actually the, the use case for the first scheme was um, that Essentially, the question is how can you transmit the public keys, for example, even if you have an MDVS scheme that satisfies privacy, how can you actually transmit the information such that the receiver will know sufficient information to be able to verify signatures? And the thing is that if, I mean, either you assume that the, uh, either you assume that the receiver just knows who the, what the context would be somehow, or if you do not make that assumption, which I think is natural, uh, then you'd have basically two guess because you just don't know who the other, who the sender and who the other receivers were, so you're just left with uh, guessing. So this is just a way to, uh, can be used, for example, to transmit the keys. Any other question? So actually I have one. So if, if I understood well, uh, if I see a message circulating and I don't know if this message is intended to me, so I should try to decrypt, right? Yes. And I should go through all the possible decryption to figure out that the message was not for me, right? Uh, yes, yes, okay. yes, you're right. Is there any uh, analysis of the complexity of the, this algorithm? I mean, uh, I did not analyze it, but it's at the very least linear. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.